So summary of what I'm going to talk about is basically this app that I built two years ago and I recently moved it to completely free hosting services and I was quite wondered by the amount of free stuff out there that is available for us to take. So yeah, I'll just do a quick run through that since it's getting quite late as well. So this app basically when Instagram was available for Android, I used it. I needed to transfer my photos to Dropbox. No, I wanted to transfer my photos to my computer and I couldn't find an easy way to do it. Connecting your phone to your computer is kind of painful because there's a cable involved. So I wrote this app to instantly drop, instantly transfer everything to Dropbox. So what is this about? Uh, this is partially is about using MongoDB in a page application because I wanted to get MongoDB sponsorship for the pizzas. <laughs> And uh, using jobs to run stuff that can wait. So a lot of times when we do stuff, right, when we get a callback or whatever, we immediately process that job. We don't put in a queue or anything, we just do it instantly. And this causes issue when sometimes the web server goes down or something. You're, no one knows that a job was supposed to happen and it just died. And running the entire setup for free. So why MongoDB? So MongoDB, one of the key things is that it was built to scale right from the start. When you organize your data, it's organized very diff differently from your regular Postgres or your MySQL DB. And you think of it from a different perspective, which I'll talk about later. It's also relatively easy to do DevOps on MongoDB as compared to Postgres or MySQL. Uh, you really just install and you can do replication sharding right out of the box. And the last one is there's a lot of free MongoDB hosts available. Like there's MongoLab, there's MongoHQ, and these are just two of the bigger ones. And there's a lot of small ones out there. So how do you start? So let's look at the code. How do you start with MongoDB in PHP? So for me, I personally prefer Code Igniter as my framework. Although recently I've stopped doing PHP almost entirely, but I can still read PHP code. So what I do in Code Igniter is I have a basic core model that all my other models will call. And you use this core model to connect to the database, which is basically just calling the Mongo client function. And you put your Mongo URI here. You put your Mongo URI here. And then you return this connection and you call the DB here. Yeah. And then after that, in my in each of my models, I have a so as you can see here, I call my call model and I get the call model connect to DB. And after this is connected to DB, I connect to the connection as well. So in here it connects to the DB, in here it connects to the connection. So DB is like a database within, like in MySQL you can have multiple DBs, you can have a WordPress DB, you can have a Joomla DB, and all those stuff. So it's the same concept. For collections, it's the same concept as what we have as tables. So each collection can think of it like a table. So, and this is how you basically insert a new function into MongoDB on PHP. Uh, you create a dictionary, a, is it an array? In PHP? Array. Uh, associative array. array. I've been out of PHP for too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you create an associative array of all the different data. Uh, you typecast it to string or whatever you want to typecast it to so that they can't inject your MongoDB funny stuff. So for example, if I pass you a series of get variables with an array, and then you just put it in directly, you get an array here instead. So this to prevent that from happening. And then you just do an insert. You just insert and you're done. It's that simple to start. And then when you're done, what happens is that it actually updates the user object with the ID of the object as well. So you can just return the ID and you're done with the whole thing. When you update, it's slightly simpler. So the whole thing about MongoDB is that it operates mainly using J the, JSON, the JSON object that we are very used to. So when you look at your associative arrays, something like the JSON data, so you have a set key, which is then a, another JSON object of all these various stuff. And then you just do an update based on the query. You set the individual fields and no settings. Because they up updated a new MongoDB to have much more saner settings than before. So previously in 2.2, MongoDB just fire and forget. If you write to database, you don't care whether it comes back or not. Whereas in the new MongoDB, it actually checks and then you get the response which I didn't check for. And yeah, to get something from MongoDB, you just use a find one function and you do your query here. And you can choose what fields to return. So this is a quick, quick start guide to running MongoDB in PHP. 
So how do you define your data structure? Have anyone here used MongoDB before? Okay. So how do you Mike, right? Yes. How do you define your MongoDB data structure? Actually, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason why I uh, use MongoDB is because I can create objects, classes, and then I just transform the class into a JSON object and I just drop it into the database. Who cares about the database? Okay. So it's quite unique, right? <laughs> so it's basically you're using as a Persistent object stock. storage. Yes, okay. and the logic about how I handle my data is in my application. I'm not going to do that in MongoDB. Okay. Anyone else use MongoDB before? Yeah. How do you? But yeah. Sorry. Just like what you said, basically you're moving your schema from your SQL file and into your application. Okay. Yeah. Because that's the essence of a NoSQL database. Yeah, correct. If you want to do it anywhere else, you're still stuck. <laughs> yes, correct. So one of the key beauty of MongoDB, which I'll talk. So uh, one of the things that when you start with MongoDB, you realize that I didn't actually create a table. I didn't actually create a DB. I didn't actually create a, DB, a schema. I just started inserting stuff into that. And MongoDB does this thing where once you start inserting, it's there. You don't need it to be there before you can start inserting. Yeah, that's one of the beauty of MongoDB. There's also this danger, by the way. Yeah, it's a danger, but <laughs> it feels good when you are starting a new application and don't have to deal with any of the overhead. And yeah, there's no schema. So what happens is that if you need... So I remember reading this case study about Craigslist before, where they had to add a new column to their MySQL database. <laughs> so what... Craigslist architecture is like is basically every three months they will move the they will move the past three months data into an archive DB and then the new data coming will become the new DB. And when they did the author table on the archive DB, it took them a total of nine months. The author table command took nine months to run. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So they upgraded to MongoDB and they just need to add a new field every time they insert something in. Yeah, so they are one of the largest installations of MongoDB as well. I heard it's, oh, it's close to 500 terabytes of data. So yeah, it can perform at scale. Well, you can also spread it better. But uh, yeah. the fact that they took so long is more a design and architecture problem. Yeah, but and actually there's a lot of data as well. MySQL. Yes. You can do it properly. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, Reddit does it come properly where they have only two tables for the whole Reddit <laughs> application. Yeah. Basically, that's one that's one table with the column key and value, and uh, that's this other column where the documents and is a list of all the keys that they have. Yeah. And now uh, you can actually have a sparse index for fields that only some documents have. So let's say so only some documents have password, you just need to index those documents. Uh, you don't need to index all of them, which saves your space on the indexing side of things, as compared to Postgres or MySQL where right? you create index for an entire database. And for a big database, that actually makes a lot of it. Well, of actually, if you want to build the uh, indexes, you build them yourself. You drop them in the database. Yeah. <laughs> but most people don't go to that extent. <laughs> and uh, you can roll out a Joe redundant database out of the box. Uh, if I have good internet data out there, more how we did that at PayPal, and I will purposely shut down one of my servers and show my app is still running. Uh, there's automatic fallover, which is not present in many of the databases we have out here, like Postgres. And Postgres, you actually have to do a manual fallover. So when one goes down, the sysadmin has to go there, sit down, and make uh, the new kind of master. Yeah, you can automate it with scripts. It's that's not it's not wrong out of the box. It's not out. Of yeah, <laughs> and that's. Uh, I'll no, I'm not so sure. I thought it's out of the box in Enterprise. Oh, you have to pay for the out of the box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> most guys here don't pay for it. Yeah, because from the Postgres is used by NASA, uh, NASA and it's used by the American Defense, so I'm yeah. pretty sure. It's yeah, they have that if you pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's inbuilt sharding from this, so you don't have to write a sharding layer in front of your application, which helps as well. So, does anyone here, can anyone here explain why you need to have worker threads? <laughs> anyone? Has anyone here used worker threads before? Okay. Yeah, 
Let's hear from the founder of PHP. <laughs> Why do you need a queue, a worker thing? So you can handle more things simultaneously? Okay, yeah. Uh, that is a very no, dangerous it's not, thing. It's not simultaneously, right? Uh, well, that depends. Okay. Well, sometimes yeah. it is. Yeah, okay, so... Depends for each other. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so uh, this was the old architecture of my code. Basically, Instagram will send me a callback. I will update DB and then I will sync the photos with Dropbox and update DB. And the problem with this thing, which I found out on my old web post, which is a shared hosting box, was that they went down all the time. And photos that were being synced halfway got dropped, and users complained that only half their photo was on their side. Yeah, that happens very frequently. So I had to re-architect the thing to look like this now. Instagram will pass it to, will send a callback over to my server. My server will update DB the queue. So MongoDB has this really cool thing where you can actually tail a collection. So you know in Unix, you do a tail dash F on a file and then you just keep reading the end of file. You can do that in MongoDB. Yeah, which is good for logging and stuff like that. But you can't delete stuff from that table. So that's the downside. But still, yeah. So. This DB will then, the worker will pull the DB once every three seconds and then get and then pass it to Dropbox. And I have this entire setup for free. Which, this part is the hardest part to get for free, but I figured it out somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you write a worker thread in PHP? Huh? No, in Heroku. Oh. Yeah. So how do you write a worker thread in PHP? Anyone wants to share some ideas? Gearman. Your man? Gearman. Oh, Gearman. How do you do that? Uh, you, you use your master as the what? Master and then you have a work, uh, page, long running PHP process that. Okay. Gets but how do you run the? How do you write the long running PHP process? Uh, just PHP. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, library it's just a that. You can use PHP daemon. Okay. You use lib event, which is actually the same in library as PHP yeah. node. Uh, there's an API for that. Okay. Or you can use PHP Q. Correct? Yeah, so uh, this is what I did. I actually bastardized code igniter to force everything in there. So I load the model and then while true, it just keep doing. And then if there's nothing to do, it's 3 so 10 seconds. And depending on action, it does different stuff. And then, yeah, I did this thing to make the memory management part a lot better because it was growing by 1 megabyte per minute on BHP 5.3. So I had to reduce my memory footprint. So this is how I wrote my queue and this, and yeah. So I run it on Heroku, so this is my prop file. So this is my web server thing, and this is my PHP data. So I run it by calling PHP index PHP with the, wait, what's this? Uh, this is the function name, so. Yeah, this is the class, this is the function. And then I input <coughs> slash dev slash now because of the read line bug on some versions of PHP. So some versions of PHP you actually need to pass in something before you can continue running. And yeah, I'll do a quick demo on my setup of my setup on the Heroku. So I've essentially bastardized Heroku to quite a certain degree. So uh, I actually have a cron job here, a cron thing that I run cron jobs every 10 minutes, every month, that kind of stuff. So there are a lot of free add-ons on this that you can use. Yeah, I'll give it some time. So yeah, uh, so I have this money thing where I reset the sync count for my analytics purposes. So I call it once a month using this free thing called Temporize, which you can get it as part of Heroku. It's a free add-on. And yeah, there's a default Heroku scheduler as well. And for my main web service, I actually use a single. So as you can see from my web, my slides just now, I have both this line and this line. Uh, so what most people do when they deploy to Heroku is that they run both in the same application. 
I actually ran it in two separate applications, which is not how you should be using Heroku, but I did it anyway. Uh, so this has one dyno. If I set this to one, right, I'll have to start paying for it. Let me show you. Yeah, once this is one, I have to pay $34 a month. Mm -hmm. I'm too cheapskate to do that, so it's like that. <laughs> and same for this. If I set it to one, I'll have to pay for it. Yeah. So the perks of using Heroku is that a lot of things are built in, like New Relic. They actually have New Relic built in, so you don't have to do much configuration. And it gives you a lot of data to look at. And yeah, this is my local track. So and you two apps. One is a worker. Yeah, one is a worker. When I push, I push the both at the same time. So, yeah, you can see all the analytics with regards to application performance here. Yeah, so you can see all this data, like which pages took the longest time. Surprisingly, the FAQ took the longest time despite being a static. And yeah, stuff like this, your database costs, which costs are the most expensive. And what is the response time of each one? And yeah, they're still trying to get me to pay. I don't think there's logs for the past 24 hours, but yeah, here you can look at all the logs that Heroku gives you as well. So it's kind of cool, all the free stuff you can just use and deploy a fully functional application. So I, on, in general, I process around 3,000 photos a month, which is not a lot, but it's still a decent amount of photos. And this free hosting actually allows me to do all that. On top of that, there's this thing called MongoLab. Uh, they give you 500 megabyte databases for free, but I found a hack around it where you can just put a Mongo as instance in front of it, and you can get unlimited MongoDS for free. So you can have a really giant database shuttered for free on MongoLab. You just have to keep creating 500 megabyte <laughs> instances. MongoLab. So Geekham has just run off here as well. <laughs> yeah. So this is the website. Uh, yeah, we sing the photos. You can see how many people see. So yeah. So this was meant to be a 20 minute presentation. And I I'm just under that, so any questions? Mine was meant to be 20, but... <laughs> <laughs> so any questions? No? So one more plug since PayPal sponsored the venue. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that. So uh, we are having this meetup on 4th December about uh, Bluetooth Low Energy at the hub. So if you're interested, just search for PayPal Commerce Factory and just drop by. Uh, most of the time it is Chef, so yeah. Does this do with iBeacons? Uh, there's both beacons and Bluetooth and Nigeria. There's talks on both. Yep, that's it for me. Any other questions for uh, Lawrence or any of our speakers tonight? No? Alright, cool.